Okay, I think we are on for recording and transcription. Um, my name is Julia Pashuto. I use she and her pronouns. I am a co-lead on the Equitable Transit Oriented Development body of work at the Office of Planning and Community Development. I'm joined here by Jenna and Alberta and our colleague Rowan. Um, if you could please type your name and organization and email into the chat, uh, we will be able to be in touch with you about the addendum. Um, and if for any reason you're looking for partners uh, to help complete different parts of the RFP, um, it's another good way to get um, connect here. Our agenda today is to review the project purpose and background, uh, walk through the consultant role, scope and submittal requirements and answer any of your questions. So to give a bit of background, um, this work originates in a grant that the an FTA ETOD planning grant that the city of Seattle received in 2020 to address equitable development along the West Seattle and Ballard Link extensions by centering community leadership and addressing station access, remnant parcels, and equitable development outcomes. We have identified two neighborhoods with high displacement risk on this alignment, C and CID, the Tenantown International District, and Delridge, where we want to uh, focus a little bit more attention, and this RFP is part of that strategy. The overarching process centers on three main um, bodies. Uh, one is the community advisory group for which we're also recruiting a facilitator. Um, that RFP is live, um, but this project is really on the place-based strategy for the Chinatown International District. We also have a group of technical support staff and city staff who are supporting kind of as that third, third bucket. Um, and this uh, for this work, both the the um, financial investment strategy. Um, sorry, there's some noise in the background. Um, the financial investment strategy is an outcome, but the process itself is also an outcome, which was co-developed by the community stakeholders who comprise the um, CID place based group. The consultant role is to is to develop a financial investment strategy for the Chinatown International District Place Based Group, who are a group of um, kind of community development oriented organizations and community formations in the neighborhood. The consultant will be expected to build and support those relationships with existing stakeholders, conduct research on existing and emerging community planning efforts, perform early feasibility analysis for community projects and provide recommendations for next steps on up to 15 community led projects. Um, our project scope um, as designed by the community, um, the place based group is uh, really to set some core foundation, which is alignment on project goals and general process design. That is something that you would coordinate with us as the city, um, but the rest is really in conjunction and in partnership with the uh, place-based group. So we start with an ideation and research phase. What do we want this, um, uh, the financial investment strategy to look like and what is the information that we need to be successful in that? early project scoping with the place-based group members to help define and refine the list of projects. Um, then there's the analysis of the actual, uh, the, fe the early feasibility analysis that will be the core component of the financial investment strategy. The consultant will be pre preparing the final financial investment strategy. Um, our goal here is to have um, the consultant on by May, where we would begin the alignment on the project goals internal between the consultant and the city um, and kick off the community facing process in June of 2024 with the final um, deliverable of the financial investment strategy uh, coming back to us in April of 2025. Um, the intermediate timelines, I think, are flexible depending on the needs of the place based group. Our timeline, we released the solicitation on February 24th. 
Today we're having our pre-submittal conference. The deadline for questions is March 13th, um, and we hope to be able to turn around um, by that Friday, I think, the 15th, um, the response to questions and the addendum. The response deadline is March 22nd, and we hope to have interviews the first week of April by and announcing the successful proposer the following week. And again, hoping to have the consultant on board uh, and, and contract executed uh, by May 8th. Want to note that there are no minimum qualifications that are required for the consultant to submit a proposal response. We do kind of name some relevant project experience in the response uh, itself. Uh, so we want to call those out here that you have experience um, successfully delivering, or we want to know about your experience successfully delivering projects of similar scale, um, mag yeah, scope, magnitude, and complexity. Uh, we want to understand your experience project managing, managing a project like this with diverse stakeholders and, and Black, Indigenous, people of color communities, specifically in the intersection of transportation and equitable development. Um, and we want to understand your experience in being responsive to shifting priorities in community-led decision-making processes. The proposal response questions that will be um, a significant part of the scoring. Um, we'd like you to describe the last three significant projects, including whether the projects were completed within the planned timeframe and budget, their challenges, um, how you overcame them and any lessons learned. We want to understand your experience developing something similar to the financial investment strategy, including project scoping and feasibility analysis, unique financing structures and existing conditions research. Um, we hope for you to describe any experience where you worked with multiple community stakeholders who had uh, differing and varying perspectives and priorities. Um, describe how you would support discussions involving the lived experience of BIPOC community members in an effort to develop planning and development strategies and experiences where you successfully navigated the dynamic between the public agency that as us, the city of Seattle and community organizations. Um, this is a scoring rubric. Um, we do have cost and pricing here, which uh, just calling out that this is different from a previous iteration of this RFP um, and no uh, WIMBY or DBE requirements. Again, we hope to publish the RFP addenda March 15th, and otherwise we are open for questions. Any questions about the presentation or the project? Bo and Brian. Uh, hi, thanks for the presentation. Um, I have a few questions. I'll just uh, start with one and make space for others who might have questions. Maybe starting out since you, uh, Julie, you just highlighted the cost and pricing addition to the scoring. Could you say more about what that's based on? Is it like clarity in the detail? Is it actually we score more if our pricing is better? Like just what goes into the 10 points? Jenna, I defer to you on the federal requirements on this. Yeah, federal, the federal funding um, connection triggers the cost and pricing as a required evaluation metric. And in general, they are looking for competitive pricing and to understand the balance between skill and competency and price. So there, there is a component of it. It is not exclusive that lowest bid wins, which you will see in some other city procurement processes, for example, but mm -hmm. pricing is a scored factor um, in terms of you know, how we would evaluate. Okay, so basically value for the money. Okay. And, and, and re yeah, value for the, the money in relationship to skill and need of the project, yeah. uh, skill yeah. provided and need of the project. Yeah, good okay. point, clarification. Uh, 
And I would just also highlight if anyone has read or reviewed prior iterations of any of our ETOD um, RFPs, please reread all of the details because they have been updated with technical requirements. And so we want to make sure everyone is is clear on what all of those are and, and cost and pricing and the evaluation is one of them. Any other content process, other sorts of questions that are coming up that we could address before we conclude? Uh, I can keep on asking questions. I just wanted to hang back a tiny bit in case anybody else is ruminating, but. <laughs> yeah, we'll keep on with our notes. Yeah. Um, Go ahead. Yeah, so it looks like the timeline uh, for the deliverable has been shortened too. Is that true? Did I catch, was that, did I catch that correctly? Just wanted to uh, understand if there is context for, um, um, it seemed to before or shortening of the overall schedule. Mm -hmm. Yeah, before the prior was an 18 month, 18 month schedule and this looked like a 12 month. I think that's an oversight on my part. Um, we're still okay. on an 18 month schedule. Um, yes, there, sh there would be more time um, basically be between the preparation of the, the the final preparation of the final deliverable would extend an additional um, handful of months to bring okay. us to the full 18 months. Yeah, and we'll we'll also put that clarification in the addendum for this in the Q and A addendum. Great, thanks. Um, I think the final question. I don't know how you are. Uh, I mean, obviously, respond within. What you're able to but i'm just thinking about how to respond to some of the questions around for example navigating the dynamic between uh, public agencies and community members and it would help to understand the maybe the point of view that the evaluation team will be coming from in terms of like level of community experience and um yeah kind of just what will be prioritized and perceived as needed skills by this evaluation team. So maybe if you are able to share just like generally, um, yeah. The, the I think the generally team. the interest is acknowledging community context and history, as well mm -hmm. as the public agency's role in shaping the lived experience in the community, both with respect to their day-to-day -day and with respect to their um, interest, trust, experience with government. So we're just trying to understand, you know, for the teams that are proposing, um, what is your experience dealing with like or similar issues and how do you approach um, facilitating relationship building, you know, when we have, I think, a very clearly acknowledged um, challenge in government with respect to engaging community members in a long-term sustainable two-way uh, transparent manner. So we lost bone, Brian, just at the tail end of what you were. Yeah, we messed up, but we'll catch it in the recording. No, no problem. Where did you, where did you get disconnected? Uh, it was like literally like 30 seconds ago. Uh, okay. Less, I mean, maybe 15 seconds. It was, yeah. uh, we were just discussing and making sure that the project team under, had experience, like understood the impact of the public agency in community. Yeah. Such as yeah. That's really the, the lens is that we want to be um, honest about acknowledging, you know, how public agencies have been present or not present in communities. Um, and shaped both live experiences, but also the ability or interest of different community members and groups to trust and, you know, participate in relationships. And so how have you experienced navigating those sorts of dynamics and what would you bring to this project with that regard? That's sort of the lens that we're looking at, just trying to be honest around the history and and what what we want to do is continuously try to be better and improve on that. 
great. Okay. Thanks. Okay. I think maybe the other this piece that I've been picking up from conversations with both folks in the CID neighborhood, but also other um, representative, you know, organizational and community representatives around you know, interested in equitable transit oriented development is um, also like that transparency kind of navigating, helping to navigate the um, transparency from the institution around the implementation of the work as well, uh, because while we may be supporting the development of the financial investment strategy, we don't necessarily have the resources at this juncture to implement the financial investment strategy. Like where you know the goal is to try to help set up the community to be able to make an ask. Um, of many institutions um, and through other funding processes. Uh, but I think that's kind of one dynamic that we're anticipating. Um, like that there's a disconnect right between what the community is asking for and what the city can deliver on. Mm -hmm. I think that's it for our questions. Thank you. Okay. And I also Any, just want to okay. note real quickly that we um, we do have funding set aside to resource the community based organizations and representatives who will be working in, uh, with the consultant. So you do not need to include that in your cost and pricing estimate. Any last questions? Okay, great. We will uh, share this video along with addendum and other things. Um, and we have everyone's contact information, so we'll let you know as, as updates are posted and shared. And feel free to reach out uh, prior to the close of the deadline for questions if any questions, additional questions come up. Okay, All right. thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have a great afternoon. Thank you.